Thank you, everybody, for coming along this morning on the fifth Sunday after Easter. Let's take a moment of quiet. Be still and know that God abides with us. God is love, and through him, we learn to understand love. Let us pray. Lord, touch our lips that they may sing your praise and glory. We greet you, risen Lord. Alleluia. You have conquered sin and death. Alleluia. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Mystery of love behind, through and beyond all things. You are the vine grower. Jesus is the vine and we are the fruit. Nourish us with your spirit that we may grow and learn and rejoice that once more as a gardener, you have made the world a place where sins are forgiven. Let us confess our sins. Lord, knowing that we have ignored you and become complacent in these challenging times, remind us that we are not God. Forgive us for our arrogance of knowing that you gave your own son for the forgiveness of sins. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And for the next hymn, it's Singing the Faith 443. Come let us sing of a wonderful love. Chapter 8, verse 26 Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candice, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. 
he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a la sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Saviour of the world. God abides in those that confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. John chapter 15 verses 1 to 8 I am the real vine and my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit and he prunes every branch that does bear fruit so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. Remain united to me and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself, and it can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, 
You cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Whoever does not remain in me is thrown out like a branch and dries up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire where they are burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit and in this way you become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you everybody um now it's time for the um reflections um and the subject at the moment is abiding with god the three readings today focus on the spirit god the father and jesus the son i'm struck by the inclusive inclusivity of the three readings i once visited a vineyard on the isle of Wight. what a palaver it is to grow grapes there's the right soil, the right fertilizer, the right amount of sunlight, and then there's the weeding and the pruning. It's a complex task. If a vine, grapevine can grow unmanaged, it will become hard to control. The references to grapevines in, are common in the Bible. It's mentioned in Hosea, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel uh, makes reference to, to, to vines. In the first century Palestine, where fresh drinking water was probably hard to come by, using vineyards to produce wine would have been common. 
So when Jesus talks about being the true vine, it will be understood how difficult a job it is to keep us connected. Christ, in his final days with his disciples, uses an illustration comparing God to the gardener or vine grower and himself to the vine. Those who abide in Jesus are like the branches. Those that bear fruit are nourished and pruned, while those that do not will be removed or left to wither and die. The concept of Jesus abiding in his followers and them abiding in him highlights that they are going, they were being nourished by the Spirit and they will become disciples and bear much fruit. Word in Time, the Methodist Reflection section, describes the passage in this way. When the vine is immensely fruitful, i.e. Jesus is incorporating faithful and prayerful disciples, the farmer, Jesus' father, basks in glory. The second reading relates to a letter from John, where John explains that God is love. These three words cast aside the Jewish tradition where the name of God was not mentioned directly as a matter of reverence. The letter John wrote was probably directed at a community which had split, some of them apparently questioning whether Jesus had lived at all. John asserts that without an understanding of love, we cannot know God. Did you know there are more references in John's writing about love than there are in any of the other Gospels? The concept of love is often trivialised. Even in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, Romeo declares his love for Rosalind, but when a few short passages, he's fallen in love with Juliet. God loves us, in fact. He created the concept of love. Even though we have sinned, God sent Jesus to die on the cross and offer us his saving grace. When siblings fall out with one another, how can they love God if they cannot demonstrate that love to their brother and sister? John is urging this, the split community to work together, loving each other. In John's letter, there's also the use of the word abide. It's an ancient word, and in modern day language, we would say it remains, it means making a home. In the first century AD, Christians abiding under the power of God, but God also makes a home for, for them and for us by his promise to be there for us as well. With a promise to forgive our sins and lead us to be, to be redeemed by his saving grace, we do not see God because he lives in us. The passage in the um, that was written um, that was read by um, Pam is in the Good News Bible, and it talks about uh, abiding. Instead of saying using the term abiding, it, it talks about remaining united in us. So abide in the context of can mean making a home in love, so that when God abides in us, we abide in the love of God. For me, it's about accepting God and knowing that the Spirit guides us. Philip was guided as a disciple into new ways of working, which were inclusive of all who were willing to give themselves over to God that loves us. Remember that after the resurrection and before the ascension, the disciples did not fully understand the extent to their coming mission and their roles in the building of the church. Today's reading started with Philip being visited by an angel who encourages him to wander down a wilderness road on the way to Gaza. On his way, he meets an Ethiopian, a fairly important person because he's a treasurer of the queen, who was reading Isaiah in his chariot. This Ethiopian is on his way back from Jerusalem and Philip's encouraged to go and um, sit in his chariot. So early in the new church's existence, this encounter highlighted the inclusivity of the church. Ethiopia was probably one of the southernmost parts of the known world at the time, and Luke highlights this event. Philip teaches this important Ethiopian about Jesus, and as, as they have travelled, the Ethiopian saw a body of water and asked to be baptised. Philip obliged, 
And as the baptism progressed, Philip was spirited away and found himself at the seaside 30 miles away. He has started to carry out his mission with some guidance with, from God. And as he returns, Philip um, tells everybody the good news. Philip was supported by God to take the first steps in discipleship. And by his actions, he started to bear fruit by baptizing this Ethiopian traveler and the promoting a new inclusive church. The Ethiopian was in charge of the treasury of the Queen of Ethiopia and is a trusted servant. He was building a home for God and God was guiding him to build a worldwide home in him. So much so that when Philip was called, he went out on his way to do God's bidding. Philip was nurturing another who would join him in the understanding the promise that God is love. As the Ethiopian rejoiced after his baptism, the Bible was going back to Ethiopia and the church was going to Ethiopia too. I think that Philip had made the first steps to spread the word of God and let God decide his path. Can we abide in God and let God abide in us? The next uh, hymn is Abide With Me. Now we're going to move to the prayers of intercession. There, there is a response in this. So when I say um, Lord of life, the response is, hear us in your love. In the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Remember, O oh Lord, in your love, the church throughout the world, especially those who minister to us, particularly Sean, who is now on sabbatical for the next three months. We pray, we pray that he comes back refreshed and invigorated.
May your whole church know your power and be assigned that your son has risen, Lord of life. Hear us in your love. Remember in your love the world that you have made, especially in India, where there is a health crisis relating to coronavirus. May we act as stewards of your world. We pray for those who strive for justice and peace among the nations. We think of those who are planning a climate summit in Scotland. May the whole world, earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord of life, hear us in your prayer. Remember in your love those who have suffered or suffer, the victims of violence and injustice. And remember all those who have fought for this country and because of the colour of their skin have been forgotten. Those who mourn the loss of loved ones, those who are ill, we think of, Valerie recovering from her operation, uh, Janet, Barry, Diane, Philip and Bente, Margaret M, Gwyneth, Mick and the family of Mary. May all in need find comfort, strength and freedom in the living Christ. Lord of life, here is in your love. Remember in your love those who mourn, for those who have spent a lifetime together and have been separated from, from a loved one. We think of the Queen who, who lived with Prince Philip for 73 years. People in our church who have experienced the same separation. May all your children receive grace and light according to their needs and come at last to share with all the saints in life eternal. Lord of life. Here is in your love. Gracious God, we ask these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, ever and ever. Charles the Wesley Hymn. All praise to our redeeming Lord.
Lord, our God, we give our thanks because you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your son. Grant that as by his resurrection, we are brought to new life. So by his continued reign in us, we may be brought to eternal joy. Through the same Christ and Lord, amen. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours, O gracious God. Amen. <laughs>